how exciting is this? We have not just one black rhino, we actually had two, but the other one disappeared into the thicket, but that doesn't matter because we've got another one coming towards us. Oh, I'm so excited. I haven't been able to talk or actually show you rhinos since today. So this is the black rhino, Dicerus bicornis. It's the same species that we get in South Africa. There's the second one. That looks like a female on the left. And I reckon the one that we saw on the right was, well, it could have been... It actually looks like an older one, because I don't know if you noticed, I did see a tatty ear. Now, I can share all sorts of exciting stories with you about black rhinos. I've spent lots and lots of time with them down in the Eastern Cape. They were the most relaxed black rhino I've ever come across. They just about come up to your car, like a white rhino would. And down here, I'm not too sure how they behave. We're very far away. You can see they're just hugging the tree line at the moment. Um, so typically, black rhinos are territorial, male and female. They both mark and defend territories. And I thought this rang true right until about two and a half, three years ago, when I saw seven black rhino together. How incredible is that? Two adult females, a male, fully grown male, no, it was supposed to be more. Three fem was it three females, two big males, and then there was two calves or something ridiculous. I forget the combination of it. There were adults of males and females, and they were in a lion sighting. It was really cool, quite close onto the airstrip. Now, it wasn't a particularly long sighting. They've just dipped down. We'll see. Maybe we can go around and get another view. Very, very, very cool, though. That's amazing. <laughs> let's go. Actually, let's see. Um, just, I don't know if there's a road that goes down that way. A little bit bumpy. Now, Jacqueline, you say yay! I presume you exclaimed yay like that. This is the first time you've seen a rhino. Well, it's the first time in almost a year that I've been able to show you a rhino, so I'm I'm ecstatic. I think that's the only way to describe what I'm feeling at the moment. I really want to try and get another view for you because they're such beautiful creatures. And I want to just see what the what the, the dynamics here. If it is a male and a female, which would be very common, or if it's maybe two females moving around together. Uh, that's what I love so much about nature is that the more you spend time with these animals, the more you learn that often what people have written about them 15 years ago, um, it's, it's, you know, the more time you spend with them, you start to see things and you go, oh, actually, I don't agree with that anymore. I've seen them doing the complete opposite. Now, Bree Bree, you're wondering if they're sociable. Uh, white rhinos are very much sociable. You can see them in quite large groups. And like I said to you, I thought male and female mark and defend territory the only time they come together for mating. And then I had the sighting where I had adult males and females and youngsters and, and sort of all interacting with one another. So I think that they're a lot more social than we actually know and hopefully when we start to spot them um, and we'll try and come around these areas i said to david this morning and uh, when we were driving i was like this is a really good area for black rhino um, hopefully we'll be able to spend more time with them and we'll see more and more interactions they're incredible the black rhinos it's the only animal i've ever been well rhino species i've been charged by i was charged by a black rhino quite badly once um it was it was interesting. Um, it was very grumpy. I'm gonna go around this car. Let's try and get them again. See, I'm not sure if, they, if they've just ducked into the thicket, if they're gonna come towards us. They might even just step out and we're gonna miss them. But we'll try our best and have a look here. Might have to use the good old binoculars, have a little scan around. Cenac, you're wondering if I know how many rhinos are in this park? I think even if I did know the numbers of the rhinos, I probably wouldn't disclose that too much, but I don't know how many rhinos are around here. Um, I think we're very privileged that we're going to show them, but let's not brag about how many are around here. Fortunately, there's some nasty people out here that want to do horrific things uh, to the rhinos. We'll just leave it at that. That's just my opinion, but I also don't know the number. Whee, that was a big bump. Sorry, David, you almost lost you too out the car to get you a safety belt. Where's that tape? We'll just strap you down. Let's see. I think they're coming this way. I'm gonna go, what I'll do is I'll go past everybody, because if we don't get another view of them, we'll carry on to the jackal den. And just sneak past here. And even if that was, oh, there they are. There we go. 
a very interesting question with you. This will spark an interesting conversation. You're wondering how common is it for leopard, lion, or cheetah uh, to attack a rhino? Not particularly common. I remember there was a sighting in the Kruger National Park, though, where the lions were trying to take on. I think they ended up killing this rhino. Uh, young rhino, but it sounded like it was injured. It, something was wrong with its leg, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think it's particularly tough. So a sighting that I've actually had before, which was, uh, oh sorry, there's a card that's just gonna go past us. Wait, are they gonna go past it? No, they're gonna stop, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> we just thought they were gonna go past us, so we're just repositioning, but there we go, we've still got a view. Um, so I had the sighting once, Kathy. it was incredible, it was in the Eastern Cape where uh, lions jumped upon a white rhino's back, and this white rhino was was not having any of it and it was I think it was lions were introduced into the area that had maybe never seen rhinos before and thought oh hey this could make a great meal and they jumped on its back and all the rhino did was run through an acacia thicket the acacia carews out came the rhino no lions <laughs> lions do not have tough skin like rhinos do especially on their sides on their back on their rump it's quite thin and sensitive around the ears and also around the tail. But um, and even lion's claws wouldn't do too much damage uh, by gripping onto the back of a rhino. So it's not a favorite food of the lions. And I think that they'll leave them around, especially something like a black rhino that's known to have a short fuse. Uh, I wouldn't want to get on the other end of that sharp horn. I don't think they would stand for any nonsense at all. Isn't this great? No, James? You know, we, we're talking about rain and animals being water dependent and, you know, hippos and things like that and them dehydrating. Your questions, well, similar. How water dependent are black rhino? Well, a lot of the vegetation that they're feeding on, remember, they're browsers, so they don't graze. Um, they'll get a lot of their moisture from from plants, but they, they will drink. Um, I pretty much, it, when I was guiding down in the Eastern Cape, there was one really old black rhino male, and he used to go down and have a drink every afternoon at the same dam. It was just his favorite spot, and he would wallow in it too. Um, so I suppose, I think it depends on a lot of different things. Um, how, how, how lush the vegetation is in the area. Um, if there's water available, of course, they, they will drink it. They, like the white runners, they love to have a little bit of a wallow. So I think it just depends. And there's plenty of little pools of water for them to, to have a sip on. But it's not, it's not particularly hot here. So I, well, I don't think so. Obviously, the animals climatize to uh, their environment. I mean, the, the rhinos down in South Africa will be slightly different to the black rhinos up here because, well, the habitat's different, the temperature's different, you know, there's lots of different things. All that movement you can hear behind me, there are lots and lots of vehicles about here. They are so excited to see the black rhino. I don't know how common of a sight it is to see. I think that we're very, very privileged. Now, I can't tell you if it's a male or female from, from here. I think that's the female, though, because like I said to you, the second one had a very, very tatty, uh, tatty, tattered left ear, and I wonder if that's maybe not a bull from fighting. Uh, often, often sort of uh, get raggy ears. Uh, we, I mean, we see that with lions as well, and leopards too, as they get older. Oh, it looks like it has a notch or something out of its ear, perhaps. Uh, they have been doing some research on them here. Uh, not necessarily tagging them with a tracking device, but possibly taking blood samples uh, and then notching, being able to identify them. Or it could just be natural too. That's so far away. I'm actually, while you're looking, I want to have a quick look with my binoculars. I just want to be able to, there's a bit of a glare on the screen. Maybe I'll be able to give you some more insight. See if I can see the other one. I haven't seen it pop out yet. Where did you go? <laughs> No, no one likes me. I don't like your Twitter handle. You make me sad when you say that. But I know that you're happy because you're watching the show, but you're wondering if there's any particular reason why the rhino has that big horn. Most certainly, it's very, very important that we're a horn to a rhino. And really, rhinos only need their horns. I don't know why people constantly want to murder these creatures. It's very, very sad. We know why, of course, for medicinal reasons. However, for a rhino, uh, for protection is the main reason, and also for greeting. Uh, you'll find when rhinos meet each other, they often sort of um, will greet with their horns, as an elephant will use its trunk to greet one another. Rhinos do a very similar thing, but it plays a very, very important role uh, for protection. And you can see there was even a little oxpecker that was hopping around 
on that rhino too. This is so exciting. I can't believe that I finally got to see my first black rhino, not even just one black rhino, two black rhinos. This is so great. This is unbelievable. I wish we were a little bit closer though. We're very far away. Sassy, now, an another question that's also quite common. I'm so sad that we don't get to, we don't seem to chat about rhinos so much, but now we can, and that is how long can they live for? Uh, typically between, I would say, between 14, 45 years old, not much more than that, maybe even slightly less. less. Um, again, unfortunately, a lot of rhinos don't reach their maximum lifespan due to the fact that they are poached. It's very, very sad. Also, there can be a lot of casualties when it comes to rhinos that are fighting. They're very, very aggressive. I've seen a black rhino versus white rhino before. My goodness, what a savage fight that was. They don't like to tolerate each other, uh, the two different species. But I think we'll leave this rhino now. We'll move on. It's quite far away and head towards the jackal den. We're going to send you back into Scott's car on the other side of the river. And his cheetah have now sat up and are having a groom.